Okay, so <laughs> how many steps were there? Well, almost every one, but uh, there were quite a few steps. We probably only kissed each other about ten times. But <laughs> so you and Grandpa walking down every step. Because you know, Grandpa was 26 and I was only 17 when we got married. And That's right. I did know that. He was, he was a world, worldly person I, and I didn't know anything. Uh-huh. What are you looking for? I was just going to plug this in real quick. And then, right here. Okay. 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 This is where all my questions are. Yeah, well, you should ask a few questions because I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a couple. <clears throat> Probably more than you'll want, trust me. <laughs> no. Okay. Up. That's not facing you, then, all right. Well, I'm gonna be. Is this the wrong place? I'll probably. Yeah, you can scoot your chair back where it was. It's fine. I'm gonna be sitting down, and we're just gonna ignore the camera. We're gonna act like it's not even here. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay, or should I have it facing another way, or? Yeah, that's fine. Just yeah. Go ahead and sit down. And... We'll adjust yeah. you how we need to. Yeah, that looks great. Airplane's scooting around somewhere. Mm -hmm. I hope I don't get hoarse. If I do, I'll have you read this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be better coming from you, to tell you the truth. So I'll just read everything, and then you can cut out what you don't want, or is that too much? Well, let me ask you a couple questions, and then we can pull that out and and do that. But yeah, if you want to, when you answer questions, just go ahead and look at me. Like I said, just act like this isn't even here. So first off, what is your full name? Mary Elva Johnson Wilkerson. Okay. And do you know why your parents named you that? Is there a reason or was it? Yes, Mama, best friend, oddly, was named Elva Johnson, no relation her best friend when they were children, so she decided to name her first girl after her girlfriend. And and then she had me blessed in the church. Well, no, she didn't have me blessed yet, but she, on the birth certificate it was Mary Elva Johnson. And then she got in a fight with her girlfriend and wanted to oh. delete the Elva, but it was too late, it was on the birth certificate. <laughs> so I just kept the Mary, Yeah, huh? Mary. Mm -hmm. Oh, how funny. And when and where were you born? I was born in Soldier Summit, Utah, in a log cabin. My, my father worked on the railroad, and they had these cabins set aside for the workers and their families. And so I was born in a boxcar in 1922. And, and the date? February? February 28th, 1922. OK. And so you said your your father, what was his name again? Leland Stanford Johnson, okay. just like the uh, university in California, the Leland Stanford oh. University. But it's not named after him, right? The I don't believe so. I, maybe my grandma did name him after that. I don't know. Okay. And so you said he was working on the railroad there, um, and that's how your family came to live in that in that cabin over there, and that's how he That's true. Born. There were about like 15 cabins. We all boxcars set up on the siding for the men. Mm -hmm. And what were they like? Were they just one room, or did they have? Well, it's just it's just a, a boxcar, the end of the train. Just one room, you might say. And Mama had to fix it up for sleeping quarters and everything in that little room. Wow. And how many brothers and sisters did you have at that time? Kelsey is my oldest brother, and he was, he's 14 months older than myself. He was born in Thistle, Utah, in 19, December of 1920. So, but of course, that's all in his paper. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I could just have you read the paper, but we'd like to hear it from you. And let me know if you don't want to answer any question that I ask or anything like that. We don't oh, want to make you okay. Well, I'll answer him, but uncomfortable or anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, and and like when I ask who your brother's names or whatever it are, I mean, I already know. But we're just doing this for our your great grandchildren, your great great grandchildren. Who, right. Who want to get to know you? Yeah, you know, this paper might be too much. Oh no, I don't know. 
you have a and what's your earliest childhood memory? My earliest there? memory is when I was three, about three years old, in Thistle. No, it was in Tooele. That's where we lived. And uh, Mama had bought me a, a for me for myself and Kelsey a helium balloon. <gasps> and I know the ceilings in those days were like uh, twelve to fifteen feet high, but just real tall ceilings. And I inadvertently let go of the string and it went, the balloon went way up in the air. That's my first memory and another one, Mama took me to the dentist because I had bad teeth even at three, age three. Oh, wow. And she said, now if you're a good girl, I'll, I'll buy you this Felix the cat was in the window. It had um, rotating arms and everything. And so it turned out that she did buy it for me. That's the first things I remember when I was about three. Mm -hmm. Wow. And let's see. Did you play any games growing up? Yes, jacks and jump rope and just the childhood games, run sheep run. And we didn't have anything like a television, no radio at first. Mm -hmm. So we had played all these games outside. We roller skated all day in Las Vegas and it was hot. <laughs> So you were born in Soldier Summit, and then you said you guys moved to Tooele? Or where did you move after Soldier uh, Summit? Well, after Soldier Summit, I guess we did, because Dad worked in the <laughs> mines and everything, but uh, that's where they divorced when I was five, in Tooele. Mm -hmm. And we lived there also. Mm -hmm. So after they divorced, then you moved with your mom, right? To Las Vegas? Or no. I was only five when they did, got a divorce, and Mama had the custody of, of us children. And there was Stan, Kelsey, and myself, and she couldn't take us. She had no means of support, no money. So Dad took us all to Mapleton. Uh -huh. And that's when I was separated from my mom from when I was five. Got that all down here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so just. Um, going along with that. You lived in Mapleton for how many years? Well, from the time I was five, I lived with Dad and his mother, his mother, with my grandma. They called her Louisa. Her name was really Louisa, I guess, but she, she, everybody called her Louisa. And I lived with them for two years, and then I, Dad had me go to, to live with my Aunt Myra up on top of the hill in Mapleton, still Mapleton. Uh -huh. So I lived there until I was 10, and then I had rheumatic fever, and Aunt Myra took care of me for about a year. And after, Mama came out to get me then. Wow. So I was, I was away from her five years. Uh -huh. So with the rheumatic fever, were you just in bed all day? I was in bed. I couldn't get up. She took care of me. I missed the whole fourth grade. Yeah. And then Mama came to get me, but we didn't go right to Vegas. We went out to uh, Utah. That's right by Duchesne. Uh -huh. And that's, then I went into the fifth grade there. I had to go. To, we went by bus from Utah to Duchesne. And I went to the fifth grade there. And after that, we moved to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and I started the sixth grade. And all this time, had your mom remarried yet, or had she was she still single at this time? She and Jack O'Brien were married because he he said when Mama came wanted to, she wanted to take all three of his children, mm -hmm. but Jack O'Brien said, "Well, you can take Mary, but not the boys." You can understand him because he didn't want any extra children. They, my sister was already born. Mm -hmm. She was born in Park City. And her name? Alice Jean O'Brien. Okay. And so that was lucky that she got to take me. Because um, Uncle Stan was three years old when they divorced, and Kelsey was five. Kelsey was six, because I was five. And they didn't live with Mom again until they were about 18. Wow. Kelsey came down, finished high school when he was 18, and Stan came down 
to Las Vegas when he was about 18. He lived with us while he worked at Nella, Nellis Air Base. That's where he became interested in airplanes. Oh, I've always wondered that. Mm -hmm. he, we worked, but he wanted to st stay at Nellis, and Byron, my husband, gave him a pep talk. He said, don't do it. Go back to Utah, finish your schooling, and don't become a pilot yet. So Stan did, and he thanks Byron to this day that he became a college professor. Oh, you know, and what does he teach now? Business, business relations. Uh-huh. How interesting. Okay, and let's see. What was your favorite thing to do for fun when you were growing up? Did you like to go to the movies? Or? Well, yeah, we went to the movies. We didn't miss one weekend going to the movies. That's a separate story. <laughs> <laughs> Doris, and my girlfriend, and I would, would scrounge around and find empty milk bottles. And <clears throat> they were... Th um, Three, worth three cents a piece for an empty milk bottle. So we'd each find, try to find three of them. That would be nine cents. <clears throat> and then we would do our landlady's dishes for a penny, because it cost a dime to get in the movies. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> empty milk bottles, huh? So people just throw milk them Milk was out. delivered yeah. in bottles in those days. Uh-huh. Quart bottles. The cream would come to the top and and uh, I just... Did you have to scrape it off or...? No, it, it just kind of stir it, mi mix it in. And... Uh, <clears throat> well, that's another story about milk. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. <laughs> well, this was later on, when Grandpa and I were married, that uh, his, fa uh, his friend, John Pilant, delivered milk for the milk company. And this lady, every time she saw him coming with the milk bottles, he'd carry two of them. And why, she'd let her dog out. Oh, no. She'd always do that every morning. And the dog would, would bark, a bite, and all that stuff. So um, John Pilot asked the lady, would you please keep your dog in until after I deliver the milk? And she paid no attention. She'd do it every time. So one time I came a bit, bit John on the ankle, so he took the milk bottles are full of milk, crash, and I don't I don't think it killed the dog, but it stopped him, dead in his tracks. And she was going to sue John and everything, but this man happened to see what was happening, and he said, oh, "All right, you're to the blame, the wife, you're to the blame for all of this." Oh boy! But John couldn't put up with it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Getting bit every morning. Now that doesn't sound fun. And let's see, talk about the personalities of your family members. Maybe your mom and Jack O'Brien. Jack O'Brien had a terrible temper. He was born in Dublin, Ireland. Mm -hmm. He had the temper to go with it. So he was always, well, and also his drinking and stuff, and that altered his personality a lot, mm -hmm. the drink. Changed him. He was a nice man before he got inebriated, you know. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't want to talk about it, but would he ever abuse your mom or anything like that? Oh, yeah. You probably heard about that. Kelsey was going to high school. I was already married to Byron, and Mom and mom and Jack O'Brien, they were getting in an argument. <clears throat> and, and so just as, as Kelsey opened the door to come at Ideal Court, we had no bedroom there either. Mm -hmm. He opened the door to, go, to come in and saw Jack O'Brien hit my mom in the eye. <laughs> real hard, and uh, Kelsey went over. He said, "Lifted Jack by his suspenders." He said, "If you ever touch my mom again, I'll kill you." He he was so angry that he had hit his mother. I'm getting hoarse. Oh no! Do you need a drink? We can pause. No, I don't sure? think so. I always get that way when I'm talking. Well, I think 